So today is the first day of uh, filming. Mm -hmm. What are the first five things you'll do when you get to set? And what time are you getting there? Um, normally I'm first. So whatever the call time is, I'm usually there a half an hour to 45 minutes before that. Um, hopefully I've got enough personnel that I'm not doing craft services on this one, which it sounds like I do, so I wouldn't be dealing with that. So I'd just be probably getting there and did, you know, depending on what job I was doing, but more than likely, you know, if I was doing the way I normally am, I'm there first and I'm last to go. So call sheets have already been gone over a hundred times. Um, and it's really just, you know, making sure we're, everybody's ready to perform, you know, how, how are we going to function? What are our first challenges? How are we going to face those challenges today? How are we going to knock those down? Usually it's the first thing is just getting us, getting you, getting you to that first shot. Do you know what I mean? Let's, how do we get to, what time, what time are we trying to get the first shot and how can we get to the first shot? And if we're falling behind on the first shot, how do we fix that? Because that's already, a, that's already problematic because now you're falling behind on your schedule, you know, and you cannot, no matter what your scale is, you cannot afford to fall behind on your schedule. Um, so that would be probably checking the AD team, seeing how things are going. Hopefully already had conversations about how the set's going to be run, I'm sure, uh, and how we're going to be operating as a unit. Um, I'm definitely more of somebody who is more of a quieter set person now as I've gotten older. Um, obviously if you're outside, you're outside. You, you know, you're not going to tell the birds to shut up, but... If you're in the studio and you know you're in a bar set like we just were, we we pretty much chose and asked people like, look, if you're not talking about what's happening in the scene, you're not talking. You know, it's it's just too much interference with that. And you know, and the other thing is, even if and if you are talking about the scene, you're using your inside voice. You know, we're not yelling over each other. We're not, you know, we're not you're not in the bar really. You know, we're turning the bar into a library. You know, we're talking through and we're, we're having controlled adult conversations and, and able to be more effective and not have to yell over each other. So things like that, you know, communication, seeing how that's working very quickly and trying to solve whatever problems are coming off of that initial thing. And if things are going well, what can I do to make things go better? or to ensure that they stay better? What can I look at that maybe like, whatever, is the lunch gonna be right? Who's got the lunch, you know, all of those different things, so. Okay, so first day of production, let's say the craft services person calls you at 4 a.m. and says, I'm so sorry, my car was towed mm -hmm. and I can't make it today because the, the shoot's in Palmdale and they live in North Hollywood. So you'll see them tomorrow on the set, you, you know, they, they're apologizing profusely you have to now become craft services. Yeah, so six. I'm, Walmart opens the six. So, you know, <laughs> so, you know they probably already have bought some of the stuff already because we could tend to do that anyway, just put some of the stuff in there because you had something from the office. So put something together and figure it out, you know, or get, you know, we should have it. We have enough. It should be at that point, it's not even me getting in the call. It's the production manager getting the call and then they assign another PA to it to a day until that person can come in. That's what probably what would happen. Like I wouldn't, I, the, scale, the scale that we're at, I would not even probably even know about it. The PM would deal with it and take, and would, would just assign another person to it and have them at wherever at five o'clock in the morning or they would go do it. Okay, so then yeah. they would go to Walmart and mm -hmm. buy Because they would have they the card, they would have the whatever, they already know what, they've already know what everybody needs and stuff as a producer or as a director or the writer. I'm probably not going to be doing that unless it's like really small, which like this last one I did, I was doing all of that. So, you know, it's possible. It's always possible. Let's say uh, second day of production, half the crew is two hours late. Okay, well, there's that's probably half the crew, depending on how long the shoot is, that are probably not going to be on my shoot anymore because that's usually something that I would, you know, depending on what department you're in. I mean, if you're... Crew, if you're like my sound guy, my DP, and my, you know, blah, 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 then we've got a really major problem. You know, that either there was a communication problem or there's a real issue. Those are usually people who are not going to be late to your set. They're usually 15 minutes to a half an hour early to your set. So already you're not going to let them be two hours late. Maybe they're going to be, you know, you're already on it 
knowing that they're going to be late at basically 15 minutes after call, right? So if they, because you expect them to be there 15 minutes before, if they're now half, if now they're not there by 1.15 or whatever, 10.15, then I'm looking around to see because I've got a shooting call by 9.45 or 10 o'clock. So if you let them get that far, you've already let it get out of control yourself in terms of like, you're already on the phone with them. You've got PAs, all of them lined up trying to figure it out. Fortunately, you've got a shooting call where, you know, depending on who you've got in makeup, if you've got your lead actress and you've got some women in the scene and you're shooting a decent scene, size scene, you need some act, you're going to need some people anyway. So you're probably waiting for them, waiting for makeup and wardrobe so you have some time. So you'll buy yourself some time off of that. And then if you had one camera there or somebody there, then you could be doing some inserts or do something and just get a shot. So that's off the top of my head. <laughs> Gave me a stress car right there. <laughs> Third day. Mm -hmm. Your director gets food poisoning and has to stay home. You're not sure if it's something from craft services. What would you do? Well, I mean, we got to trace back through what they ate, obviously. I mean, you know, so it, if it's something from craft services that we can identify, then you, get, you have to get rid of almost everything. So you have a little bit of a loss there. And you have a director who's not directing, so you'll have to have somebody stand in for them for that day. Usually, you know, you could have your first AD who may have done the list with them, the shot list, who would be a union person or bring in somebody or one of the producing team, you know, would direct for that day until they were, came back. And maybe you could even do some of it remotely, you know, because you can always just stick something up and have them look, watch it and have them call it, so. There's remote ways to do a lot of things now, so that would be another option as well. Just put a monitor up, have them do it, and have them be talking to somebody directly and have them relay this stuff. Wow, so they could be laying in bed mm -hmm. and basically giving feedback on the shot? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Has that ever happened? I've never done it, but I know I could do it. It's not that difficult. I mean, it's just setting up a live feed. They could just do a live stream, you know, and just make it private. Fourth day, your director's still sick, and now you've lost a location, and it's a key location. It's not the location I'm on, I assume. It's one that's coming up. Correct. Okay. Yeah, fourth day. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, some of these things happen, so you have to make adjustments. Probably one immediately, depending on if it's the next location, you may be moving that to, to something, moving something up that you do have locked until you can get that and have time to figure it out. More than likely, you also had second and third choices on everything that you looked at. So then you're looking at those other options and contacting them and seeing why they're not available. There'll be compromises for why you didn't choose them, but that will be what you will end up doing. Uh, what was else going on? Somebody was uh, sick? Director's still sick. Yeah. Director's still sick. Mm -hmm. Then director may, director may have to go to the doctor and see how long he's going to be sick for. I might have to hire another director. That would have to be figured out that day, too. Okay. You got an actor from your note, you, you know, or you got drinking and doing other things, or you really got food poisoning. Because <laughs> food poisoning is usually over in 24 hours. Okay, so maybe it's something else. It's, and I mean, they got the flu. or You the, have to have a talk with them. Maybe they're sick. Maybe they've got a, a, a flu or a bug or a thing, and it's more than just, you know, because food poisoning generally is, you know, I don't know if you've ever had a day. You know, one time. Day yeah. two mm -hmm. at the most. Right. So. Do you love uh, challenges, solving problems? Oh, yeah. It's, it's one of my favorite things in the entire world. Do you, but do you get nervous that things go too easy? Um, I don't get nervous. I just anticipate the fact that, it, you know, that that's... If I've planned well enough, things should go well. If I've thought through all of the things that can go wrong, or if I'm doing my job well enough, even things are going wrong, you don't know it. Because we're just handling them. That's what happens. It just gets done. It, problems are part of what we do. So, you know, you fix them. What makes all the stress of making a movie worth it to you? Mm, well, I guess because I don't find it as much stressful as a lot of people do. I'm one of those weird types that find everybody going blah, 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 very calming. So, you know, I think that's part of that. I find some of the environment normal. Um, like I find production normal, like where I think some people find it completely abnormal. 
Um, and so I find it very rewarding. I like having my time, like I like knowing I'm just going to be doing this all day, you know, and I don't have to worry about doing anything else because that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, so I think that's what really does it for me is, is that it's something that can be very, uh, it's, filmmaking takes what you give it. And the more you give it, the more I think that it shows. And I think that, you know, whatever I'm involved in, I think that there's always been an underlying, you can see whatever passion I personally bring to things because it's there in the quality, it's there in the, the happiness of the crews, it's there in the, the perception of that there's nothing else acceptable except for trying to do something better than we thought we could do. And then it's all about the project. And when you do it that way, I think it, it, it always shows. So congratulations. The movie's in the can. You went 20% over budget. So you have the contingency, the 10%. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about the other 10? Well, depending on the deals that you've made, you're either pulling it out of your pocket or you're looking for some more money on the street. <laughs> more than likely, at that point, you're probably pulling it out of your pocket. Because that's the producer's responsibility or the executive producer's responsibility. If you set up the budget and you didn't figure it out, then you're probably putting some back off your salary. It's better to have that in the back part of it now that the, the movie's sort of like in the can mm -hmm. than in the beginning when you're scrambling to make it work. Yeah, I mean, if you know, you're going to probably be able to anticipate that and it may be not as bad because maybe it's just you just, you know, deferring some of your salary until you get something done or it's... You probably shouldn't get, you probably wouldn't get to that point because you could figure out there's so many different moves you could make in cash flow and, in, and how you use money and what returns and all different types of things um, that you should not at that budget level get to that point and be like, I'm 5,000 short. You know, it just shouldn't be. Because one, over the course of the project, if you keep it in a bank account, you're going to actually over the course of a year you're going to earn some money off of whatever money is left in that account if you leave in the savings account anyway. Probably enough to actually, maybe if you leave enough in there, to, to cover that reserve. Well, depending on interest rates. Depending rate. on how much the interest rates and how much it is, but you could actually make some. You could actually make some of your contingency money up by just putting it, in, but just holding on to your cash flow appropriately. Okay. And just by not maybe paying somebody on it, like if you're at that, you may be paying somebody on a six month or paying some, you know, coming up with a, you know, a 60 day window on somebody or it's cash flow, essentially. Like either you're going to have to cover the gap or somebody else is going to cover the gap or I got to figure out how that gap's going to be covered. But if you created the gap and there's no other money, then it's, you're paying it. How are you spending your post-production budget? As frugally as possible. Um, one, I do not believe in the terminology fix it in post, having been a post-production supervisor. Uh, that does not exist. That just means how much money, more money do you want to spend to fix it in post? And some things can't be fixed in post. Um, but also trying to give them more time than less time. Um, like in the beginning of your process, hopefully you've been fat. Like any budget, you should be trying to put more money at it than you think you need in every single category and then start pulling away from those those things. Because if you do that, eventually what you're going to do is, is that at some point, you didn't pull it away from one of those things you put it fat in, and that's going to be your reserve. That's going to be your little bit of hidden money that you went, you know, that it, it, it ended up costing 12000 instead of 15000 for the set design. Because I put in an extra, I thought it was ten, but I put in five more just because. So if you're frugal along the way, even, uh, dare say, cutting corners? No. Dare say negotiating as hard as you can with what budget you have. A produce, that's why producers, that's what the, the joke is producers never say they, they never have any money. Okay, A producer never has any money. That should be the first thing. I don't have any money. Okay, The money I have, I've got to save. And I got to maybe tell you I don't have any money and try to get you to maybe even do it for a little less than you normally would so that I can save some money and put that into something else. Like nonprofits. No. <laughs> just, well, just like anything. But you have, it's, it's hip pocketing it, right? You got you to gotta, you gotta play those cards tight. You know, everybody loves a producer. Goes, well, I've got $500 in the budget. Will you take $500? Yeah, that's not negotiating. <laughs> okay, it's like... 
It's like maybe it's like uh, you know, I mean, look, if the going rate's the going rate and the person's qualified and that's what it is, but maybe you can say, look, I'm an independent movie. This is what I've got. You would really be helping me out if you could do this, but I'll make sure you're going to have the best meals you've ever had for you ever had an independent movie. They may say yes if they like you and they want it and they need to do it. But it doesn't hurt to ask. And I always feed them really well. So it, you're almost a poker player? 100%. Okay. Because you've set up this budget, you've set this thing up as a, does that, okay, I got these cards. Here are the cards you gave me. You don't know how many cards I've got. You don't know what they say. I'm not being, I'm not being nefarious by not giving you all my cards, are you? These are my cards, right? This is all I have. So if I give you this, then what am I going to play with? This is all I've got. My budget, my actor, my camera, my director, my production unit, distribution, right? All the, whatever those elements, my distribution contacts, my money contacts. So all of these elements come together and then they eventually make this movie, right? But they're all my, they're all some form of producing to put them together. But can you say what magical form of, produ of producing puts them together? No, it's just the binding of the fact that actually they become, it is a movie at the point of that, that some individuals bound that all together and now there's this moving image that it still exists, that becomes a movie that was like a small throwaway business for, you know, six months, two years, however long. There was just this, entity that started up to make this one thing and then goes away. Excellent. But then the movie lasts forever. <laughs> kind of cool.